everybody, it's me Sandy and I'm back with another nail art video. This time I'm going to be using the March Holo Hookup Box Polishes to do a fun gradient with two different stamping options. But before we get started, if you could just go down and hit that like button, as well as subscribe and hit the post notification bell so you can find out when I upload a new video. Now let's get started. So we'll just get started with option one, and this is the first one that I did. I used all four hollow hookup polishes on a white base, and then used the What's Up Nails B004 plate seductive lace. So I'm going to start off with my favorite base coat, which is Anchor by Zoya. I know with gel extensions I don't need a base coat, but I just find it gives me a much smoother surface and uh, lets the nail polish just lay down better. So I have done my um, other hand off camera as always, and uh, yes, these are the extensions that I put on myself, so I am not a nail tech, and I know they look pretty crappy, but we'll hide them with polish and it'll all look just fine. Now that my base coat is dry, I am going to put on two coats of White on White by China Glaze. I'm not going to show this second coat um, on either hand in the interest of time, and I have already, as you can tell, done my other hand off camera. So I've already prepped around my nails with a product called Clean Cuticle. It is a cuticle tape and I look pretty hilarious putting it on, but it does protect the skin quite well when you're sponging or doing water marble or stamping. I just look pretty awkward. So the first polish we're going to use is from Lilypad Lacquer and it's called Mint Topia. And the second polish is from Different Dimensions. It's called Bananarama. Then we're going to be using Peachy Keen from Glisten and Glow and Blueberry Bell from Cupcake Polish. So after rearranging my polish bottles about 400 times to make it easier for me to grab the colors I want in a timely and organized manner, I am taking a makeup sponge that I got from the dollar store. It doesn't have to be expensive and I'm just going to put down a layer of polish you know, a nice good line of it on the sponge, leaving room for all four colors, and um, but making sure that the colors overlap a little bit. And some are a little bit wider because of the style of the brush, and some are a little bit more narrow, but you just have to make sure that you load that sponge up pretty good. I tend to lay down one line of all the colors first and just get it positioned on the sponge, make sure I got it where I want it, and then I will go in and load it to make sure it's a little bit um, more saturated to make sure it stamps really well. Well, let me just repeat myself about 400 times with the same words, but oh well. Gosh, I really just love, love those colors together. Such great spring colors. So now that I have my sponge loaded, I'm just going to line it up onto my thumb where I want it. And at first I'm kind of just rolling it over to see if I've got it positioned right, and giving it a little dab. And then if I need to, before I go to the next finger, I'm going to load it up with a bit more polish. If I don't like exactly how I laid it down, when I go around on the second coat, you know, I can fix my positioning a bit. But it's just a case of making sure your sponge is saturated and making sure that you line it up on your nail and then just placing it down and then just doing a little bit of dabbing with a touch of moving. You can just roll it and just carrying on. And you can use the same sponge over and over and over again on all your nails. I actually can do a full um, way around them about three or four times without needing a new sponge unless I take a break in between. So I took a break for dinner, so I am starting a new sponge because the other one 
did um, dry up. Because I have the extensions, I'm needing kind of a bit of a larger surface, so I didn't just cut a piece off of the other one. I decided to start a whole new one. So I'm just going to load that up and then continue my sponging and finish off my gradient. And you have to go around maybe, you know, depending on the opacity you want, maybe two times, maybe three times, maybe four. You can go and fix mistakes, like if you didn't get enough of one color or you got too much of another. When you go for that next round, it'll actually is easier to fix, as you'll see in my fast forwarding sponging. Now that I'm happy with the opacity of my gradient, I'm going to pull off my clean cuticle, um, cuticle tape and then we'll proceed to cleaning up a little bit around the edges with a cleanup brush and then I'm going to put on a coat of Sesh Feet. So for those watching for the first time, I do like to put a layer of fast dry top coat over my enamel before I stamp because I think it just gives it a nice smoother surface. It's just kind of a habit because if I use nail vinyls, I have to do that. And it's just something I've kept doing even with my stamping. So now it's time to get stamping. And what I didn't show you off camera is that I put a little bit of OPI's glitter off around my cuticles. It's blue based. It's not the best for that. It is supposed to be a peel off base coat, but it's what I have at the moment when I was doing this. So I am gonna take the black stamping polish from Clear Jelly Stamper, more like 1 a.m. and put it on my What's Up Nails stamping plate, B004 Seductive Lace. And I am gonna use the same design on all my nails. Um, I love Clear Jelly Stamper stamping polishes. They're a really nice formula and I do use a lot, but I'm just going to scrape that down. Should only really need one scrape, but I was a little awkward there. And I am a very messy stamper, so I'm using my large stamper and just I take off the excess with a little bit of scotch tape. And you can already see I've done my other hand. So I roll the stamper to get the image and then I hold it down onto my nail and just press it down firmly and give it a little rocking motion to make sure that it's fully applied to my nail. Now my thumbnails with the extensions were quite large so I am going to try and stitch that together per se um, and uh, I don't think I did too bad a job but uh, we're just going to give that a little bit of polish and try and get um, that to line up or at least make the design look right together so um, I think I did a pretty good job uh, being able to see what you're doing is very important and I only did pull up a bit of that image but I only needed a little bit of that image and I was happy with what I got I think it looks good so I'm gonna just do the same thing on the rest of my nails and then we'll be back for another top coat
now that I've done all my stamping, I'm going to grab my clear jelly stamper um, smear knot fast dry top coat. It's water based so it doesn't ruin your design. I do wait for my design to dry a little bit and I do still float it, but I have found this to be amazing. So I put a coat of this on first and then I follow it up after it's dry with a coat of sesh feed to really seal in my designs. Now on to option two. I decided the next day that I thought that the black stamping was too dark. It wasn't spring enough for me. So I went ahead and did this design. So for option two, I did the same base, the same um, sponging. So I decided not to show that again. And even though it was a different day, we're going to put this on the same video. So for this option, I'm using a different stamping plate. I'm using Nature's Beauty Garden at B005 from What's Up Nails, but I am still using the black stamping polish, and then I'm also going to use the angelic white. I'm going to have uh, black stamping polish on my ring finger and my thumb, and the angelic white on the rest of my nails. I'm going to start off with the black. I just laid some polish down, scraped it. Quite a few times apparently. Uh, I'm just going to roll the stamper over, pull off any excess with a piece of scotch tape. I'm so sorry you can't see that. And then I'm going to press that into my thumb and once I feel like it's on there I'm going to lift the stamper up and clean everything up and carry on with the rest of my nails. Once I have all my nails stamped I am going to add a coat of the clear jelly stamper smear knot top coat for stamping and then follow up after that's dry with a coat of sesh feet. I just like to make sure everything's all sealed in. I do want to add that right after you're done stamping to you should pull off whatever cuticle barrier that you have before everything dries so that nothing pulls up with the cuticle barrier that you don't want it to. You want to make sure your stamping design stays on your nails. Here I did accidentally do my ring finger with the angelic white, but then I just went back over it with the black and it looked pretty cool. Easy to fix the mistake. So here's the two completed options using the March Hollow hookup box and two different What's Up Nail stamping plates. I think they both turned out really great and I do love this combination for spring. So I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, if you could go down and hit that like button as well as hit subscribe and post notifications so you can find out when I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.